Hello everybody, Slough here with an update on what's new in Floatools version 2.2. What? Version 2.2? Weren't we just on 2.0.1? Yes, we were. But we just decided to skip all those numbers and go right to 2.2. And this is the third time I'm recording this demo. Because we've been adding new stuff all the time and that's it. I'm done. This is it. Version 2.2. No more demos. This is it. Okay, we've got some little things, a couple of big things. Very excited about this. So uh, let's dive right in. So if you've ever edited drum takes in audio, you know that tap to transients is definitely your friend. The thing is, when you start, you know, splitting clips and stuff, it starts to get confusing, whether you're on a clip boundary or whether you're at a transient only. And so what we've done in version 2.2 is we've added a speak slash toggle tab to transients. It's the same shortcut uh, combination, you know, uh, command option tab. Tab to transients on. And double tapping. Tab to transients off. Turns it off. We've done the same thing for a couple of other uh, commands. Uh, the insertion follows playback, control N. Insertion follows playback on. Insertion follows playback off. Double tapping turns it off. The edit modes, you know, shuffle, slip, spot, grid, F1 through 4. So now if you tap them once. Shuffle mode on. F2. Slip mode off. If you double tap. Slip mode on. Yeah, so it toggles it. Again, it's a very simple thing, but sometimes, uh, you know, sort of being able to know when something is on rather than selecting it, because if these shortcuts weren't there, pressing F2 would just simply select slip mode. And uh, sometimes you you just want to check. You just want to query it rather than changing. Uh, F3, of course, spot mode. And F4, grid mode. Grid mode off. If you double tap it, it'll toggle the grid mode on. Grid mode, absolute. But be aware that there is an absolute grid mode and a relative grid mode. So a Double tapping again will simply toggle the absolute versus relative. Grid mode, relative. So uh, let's go back to slip mode. Slip mode on. Okay. A couple of similar shortcuts, but uh, sort of more like playback and record modes. Uh, loop playback, command shift L. Loop playback, checked. I'll double tap that. Loop playback. Option L. Loop record, checked. For loop record, double tap that. Loop record. So if, if you if you hear it say checked, that means it's enabled. I'm going to turn this back on. Loop record checked. Okay. Loop record. And if it just says loop record or loop record, <laughs> or if it says, uh, you know, loop playback, if, if it doesn't say checked, that means it's not, a, uh, not enabled. Um, quick punch. All right. So like all of these modes, you cannot toggle on when playback is engaged uh, command shift P quick punch right so it, it's not enabled if I were to engage uh, the transport and quick punch was not on I can't turn it on while the transport is engaged so let's say you're you're about to do a punch in and uh, you know you have a singer in the in the booth and uh, you're going oh man is quick punch on or not well you could just check you could press command shift P and if it says quick punch checked, then then you're good. You could do your punching. But if you hear it just say quick punch, then you know you have to stop the transport, apologize profusely, and <laughs> turn quick punch on quickly, and then start again. Um, the last one for this type of uh, sort of speak slash toggle is pre-post roll, uh, command K. Pre-post roll. Okay, now uh, I'll double tap it. Pre slash post dash roll checked. Yeah, so again, same kind of concept. Let me turn that off for now. Pre slash post dash roll. Yeah, now pre post roll you can uh, change during playback, uh, but uh, you know, uh, it falls under the same category of speak slash toggle. They all work the same way, and uh, we hope that helps you. We have a new macro group called the uh, Pro Tools Selected Tabs macro group, and uh, it's very simple, but it comes in handy. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's go to the uh, preferences dialog. Menu bar, Apple. Setup menu. Preferences ellipsis. Preferences. Pro Tools vertical. All right. So um, 
we're in the preferences dialog, and you know the default uh, shortcuts for uh, choosing different tabs: Command One, Two, Three, etc. In the Numbers row. Um, but if you don't remember, like you know, which tab exactly you want to get into, like uh, I don't know, I want to get into them. Uh, mixing tab. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to use the shortcuts this time. I'm just going to navigate in here with voiceover. Display one of nine selected. Tab. Operation two of nine. Editing three of nine. Tab. Mixing four of nine. Tab. There you go. So I'm going to press uh, voice space on that. Press mixing four of nine. Selected. Tab. Now, in order to get into the meat of this window, I'd ha either have to navigate backwards or across uh, to get to the end and then wrap around, but I'm going to navigate backwards in this case. Editing three. Operation two of nine. Display one of nine. Tab. And now I'm going to go down. Set up. All right, so you have your setup stuff here. The controllers, automation. Like this, you know, this whole area in here. Now, instead of using the, uh, you know, instead of using voiceover to select a tab, I'm going to go back to up to the very top. Pro Tools, vertical line. And instead of navigating there, I'm going to use the shortcuts. Command 1. Display 1 of 9 selected. Command 2. Operation 2 of 9 selected. Editing 3 of 9 selected. Mixing 4 of 9 selected. Okay, so as I press these shortcuts, Command, 1, 2, 3, etc. on the numbers row, it selects and speaks the tab. So now, instead of navigating back to the left or over to the right, I can just go straight down because I haven't moved the voiceover cursor. So I'm just going to go straight down. Display 1 of 9, tab. Set up. There you go. So I just I could just go straight down into the main part of the window rather than having to navigate across. It's very simple, but it's a time saver. And like if you can't remember what tab you're in, like this this window has like nine tabs. So like I don't know what's what's tab seven. I have no idea. MIDI seven of nine selected. There you go, MIDI. So it gives you a little bit of a report, and this works in uh, dialogues like uh, well the preferences obviously, uh, I/O setup, peripherals and uh, even the dashboard. So it's a little time saver and uh, hope that helps you. So you remember when we added those shortcuts for the inspector to change like volume and pan without interacting with the track? Uh, we apparently forgot uh, one of the controls and that's in the instrument section and that's MIDI volume. So uh, you know how you could change a track's volume fader with control, command, up, down, arrow? Well, if you do command, option, up, down, arrow, that'll change the MIDI volume. So close button, tracks, track, piano, dash, instrument, track. Here we go. Option, command, up or down arrow. I'm going to go down. Plus 95.0. Plus 94.0. Yeah. So, yeah, again, it's helpful. It helps things uh, be more efficient when you have to just change the MIDI volume as opposed to the track's output volume. So, simple, but very handy. And speaking of simple but handy, uh, you remember when we added the speak slash copy mouse coordinates relative to window? Well, we've added a, uh, an additional such command, and that is to speak and copy the coordinates of the mouse pointer relative to the screen. Command, Option, Shift, A. 186, 515. Yeah, so just in case it's, it's needed, uh, you've got it, use it, have fun with it. So let's move on to a couple of bigger ones. I'm really excited about these. So if you were to look at the, like the Pro Tools demo session, and... Um, well, you know, you couldn't tell uh, as a blind user how wide the track lists or how wide the clips list uh, tables are. And what happens visually is that uh, when these uh, tables are kind of narrow, they get concatenated and like sighted users can't tell what's written there. And uh, it's not necessarily a problem for a blind user because voiceover in the tracks list table will read everything. Um, but in the clips list table, if you're trying to click on something to drag it and the clips list table is say 80 something points wide, um, if you try to click on an item, you'll be outside of the table, and so the drag won't work, et cetera, et cetera. So what we've done is we've added some shortcuts uh, for you to be able to resize the tracks list table and the clips list table. Uh, so uh, if you press, let's say in the, I'm in the edit window right now. Edit colon. Yes. Um, I'm going to press command, control, shift, T. Track list table is 85 points wide. Click on drag to resize. Okay, so it's 85 points wide, which is just like, you know, that's pretty small, but that's like the default width. Now, 
Flow Tools said, you know, click and drag to resize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a mouse down command, control, option, command, shift, space bar. Mouse down, edit colon, Brian Dunn, loop task, window. And I'm going to use the Flow Tools mouse movement shortcuts, which uh, uh, in this case, I'm going to move to the right. Command, option, shift, right arrow. Right. I'm going to do that a few more times. Right, 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 right. Okay. And now I'm going to issue the mouse up. Mouse up on edit colon, Brian Dunn loop. Okay. And now I'm going to press that command, control, shift, T command again. Track list table is 165 points wide. Click and drag to resize. Okay. So now that track list table is 165 points wide. So I've doubled its uh, width, essentially. Uh, I'm going to issue the same kind of shortcut, but instead of T, I'm going to press C for the clips list. Clips table is 86 points wide. Click and drag to resize. Okay, now the clips list is on the right side of the edit window. So um, the mouse pointer is in position. It's ready. Flow Tools puts the mouse pointer right where it needs to be in order to resize the window. Now, since this table is on the right side of the edit window, I'm going to issue the mouse down command. Mouse down on edit colon. Brian Dunn. And instead of dragging to the right, I'm going to drag to the left to widen this. So command, option, shift, left arrow. Left, 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 left. So I'm moving 10 points at a time, so I've widened it by 80 points. So now mouse up. Mouse up on edit colon. Brian Dunn loops past the window. And I'm going to issue that same command just to check uh, what the width is. Command, control, shift, C. Clips table is 166 points wide. Click on drag to resize. There you go. So uh, this this really comes in handy more so uh, for the clips table. Uh, if you're going to be clicking and dragging things, uh, if you have sighted users who want to see more of what's going on, or for example, if you've gotten a session from somebody where the you know the tables are set very wide and there's no need for them to be so wide, uh, it just gives you a little bit of control over that kind of stuff. But now here's where it gets really exciting, these next couple of macros. And I'm going to make the clips list table narrow again. Mouse down on edit colon. Brian Dunn loops right, 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 right. Mouse up on edit colon. Let's check. Clips table is 86 points wide. Okay, so it's only 86 points wide. So uh, Flow Tools 2.2 offers you the ability to mark a clip to drag to a particular track in the edit window. And it just, it really simplifies the process. And, uh, uh, and it will drag a clip to the insertion point. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to uh, move to the clips table. In clips table, row one. Okay, so I'm going to look here for... Collapse zero eight. Um, Audio clip quote zero eight. Track zero. Audio clip quote zero eight. Track zero eight dash zero two quote. Left parent stereo light parent time. Okay, so the command that I'm going to use now is command option shift comma. And that's mark clip for drag. I'm going to press it once. Mark for drag. Okay, but I want to show you what happens if I hold the modifiers down after issuing the command. I'm just going to continue to hold. I'm pressing Command, Option, Shift, Comma, and holding the modifiers. Mark for drag. So you hear the clip. I'm letting go now. And so that's like the equivalent of the option clicking and holding on a, on a uh, clip in the clips table. Uh, it, it would be auditioning the clip in this case. So now this clip is marked for dragging. I'm going to uh, exit out of the clips table. I'm going to navigate to uh, an audio track. Out of clips table, row 250, show text, show slash hide, doc track list, show slash hide, click dash ox track, Brian Dunn dash audio track. Okay, so here I have an audio track that I want to drag to, and I'm going to press Command Option Shift period on this track, and watch what happens. Finish dragging. Okay, so it said finished dragging. So right now, if I just play this track from the top, there's the clip that we just dragged. Now, I'm going to stop this, and I just want to point out that this particular macro, uh, the, you know, drag to uh, track, you know, drag clip um, is still in beta because it works most of the time, or I would say half of the time. <laughs> the thing is, we're still trying to figure out why it does sometimes fail. And we have a theory or maybe several theories about that. We're not sure. But if it does not work, if, if the uh, drag to track does not work, you can simply 
issue the command again until it is successful. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to issue that command again. Command Option Shift period. Fail Dragon. Ah, there. So it failed that time. Let's see if we do it again. Finish Dragon. Okay, so it didn't work the first time, or let's say the second time. It did work the third time. You may be in a situation where it may fail three or four times in a row, but it will work eventually, okay? Um, and so, and the, the, the really nice thing about this particular uh, uh, combination of macros, especially the first one, the mark for drag, is even if the clipsless table is only 86 points wide, uh, Flow Tools compensates for where it clicks uh, when it's dragging the track. So it doesn't matter if the... If the clipsless table is narrow, you don't necessarily have to widen it in order for it to be successful in terms of clicking and dragging to a track. Now, if you have multiple clips selected and you have your drop order selected, uh, you know, like left to right, you can select multiple tracks and then just mark one of the selected tracks for dragging and go to your audio track, and then when you do issue the drag command, it will drag all of the selected uh, audio clips to that track. And if you have several tracks, you know, you just navigate to whichever one you want to drag to. Now, mind you that this is kind of a, you know, it's a mousy kind of thing. It's a little bit visual. Uh, things have to be visible in order for things to work. So if you have you know, 60 tracks, they are not all going to fit in the edit window. So you want to try to kind of minimize the variables. If you have a, uh, a clips list uh, with, you know, hundreds of clips in it, and you want to be dragging something that says, uh, you know, whatever, trumpet, uh, you don't want to have your uh, acoustic guitar and bass and, you know, all the, all those kinds of clips visible. You want to do a fine command shift F f search for trumpet. And then, you know, your list will be, uh, sort of, uh, more focused and the clips list, uh, table, depending on your screen size and all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, it, it'll, it'll typically, uh, show roughly 80 or so clips, uh, just so that you, you have some kind of a benchmark. And in terms of the uh, timeline, of course, it, it all depends on your track heights. Uh, but, you know, you, you can easily have, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight tracks easily in the edit window. But uh, the point is, uh, this really simplifies the ability to drag clips, and it, it will drag to the insertion point. So if you have a specific location of, you know, get that insertion point there, go to the clips list table. Uh, it doesn't matter which order you do that and you could create the insertion point wherever you want, scrub or however you do it. And, um, and it will drag the clip to the insertion location as long as you are uh, at least in, uh, let's say slip mode, uh, that it doesn't work that way in shuffle mode, but if you're in slip mode, uh, it will work. Now let's move on to the biggie, and I'm just so excited about this one. And this is the new MIDI event list group. Oh, this is so, this is so much fun. I'm going to open a different session. So I've just opened up a standard MIDI file of, uh, in this case, Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata. And I'm going to open up the MIDI event list. Option equals. MIDI event list checked. MIDI event list window. 1641 events. All right, I'm going to jump into the table here. In event list table, row one. Okay, I'm going to move across. C3 text field, column two, row one. And I'm going to click on this with voiceover. Press selected, C3 text field, column two, row one, text field cell. All right, so of course, if, uh, if I use the down arrow, you know, it'll go to the nodes and select them as it goes. Let's go back up to the top. Now, if I'm moving through the uh, notes, of course I can hear them, but uh, I might not know what pitch they are. Uh, of course, in order to know the attack, I would have to move over to the, uh, to the column to the right, uh, you know, the MIDI velocity, the, the on velocity, if you will. But if I'm, you know, like right now I'm in the first column, uh, I'm sorry, in the first row, but if I've, you know, gone down the list, 
<laughs> the row that I'm on where voiceover is, you know, is not the currently selected note. This C3 here. C3 text field, column two, row one. You know, in the first row, that's not the note that's selected. The note that I selected is, you know, several notes down. So the note that is currently selected is, you know, several rows down the list. Um... I don't know what pitch it is. I don't know what the attack is. I don't know what the release is, where it occurs, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now Flow Tools offers you the option to uh, query which note is selected, what its attack is, what its release is. So, for example, uh, right now I'm going to press Option P for pitch. G2, pitch. All right, G2 is the pitch that is currently selected. The attack or velocity or the, you know, the on note on velocity would be option A. 24, attack. Okay, uh, the release, in this case, it's going to be zero. Zero, release. In this case, in this particular sequence, all of the notes uh, are, uh, the release values are zero. Um, where does this note occur? Well, you know, those shortcuts are already built in. Uh, because if I read, let's uh, use voiceover and just read on this first row. I'm going to read to the left. One vertical line, one vertical line, zero, 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 text field, column one, row one. That is where the note appears. And that is really the same as the start Okay, so the currently selected note, I'm going to press Command F1. Bar 1, B2, start. Okay, so that is the value of this currently selected note, the G2. Um, how long is this note? Well, I can use Command F3. 244 ticks, length. So that is the length. So this is just like that start, end, and length uh, field, you know, the, those fields in the edit window, well, those apply to MIDI notes that are currently selected. Now, uh, okay, so I've, I've queried this in terms of, you know, uh, option P, option A, the start, the end, etc. But we can navigate this table and get sort of feedback in another way using Flow Tools uh, sort of monitoring feature in the MIDI event list. And what I'm going to do right now is press control right arrow. Bar one, B2, start. Okay, I'm going to press it again. G2, pitch. Okay, so now I, I landed on the second column, which is the pitch column. To the right of it, of course, is attack. 24, attack. Okay, I'm going to use control left arrow to get back to the... Uh, G2, pitch the pitch column. And now if I use the down arrow or up arrow, I will hear the note, but I will also hear flow tools telling me the value in that column. E flat two, pitch. E flat two, pitch. G two, pitch. E flat two, pitch. If I do control right arrow to get into the uh, attack column. 23, attack. Okay, and use the down arrow. 60, attack. 25, attack. 42, attack. So you see, depending on which column I end up in, using control, left or right arrow, I can get different information reported to me, whichever information I choose. I'm going to go uh, back over to the start column. C2, pit bar 2, B1, start. Okay, so here's the start column. I'm going to use down arrow. Bar 2, B1, tech 240, start. Bar 2, B1, tech 480, start. Bar 2, B1, tech 720, start. And I want to point out something. I'm going to continue down. Bar 2, B2, start. Bar 2, B2, tech 240, So now you notice start. that one of those notes didn't report anything. Bar 2, B2, start. Because this other note, I'm going backwards now up the list. These two notes are on the same exact starting point. Okay. Now, so Flow Tools will not report the same start time, you know, a second, a third time, etc., unless that start value changes. Uh, visually, these notes, they do appear in their own rows, but when you have notes that appear at the very same 
point, uh, they sort of appear in a cluster together. So Flow Tools takes that into account. And, you know, the same would hold true, let's say, for uh, probably uh, length and stuff like that. Uh, attacks are probably individually going to be, re um, you know, uh, reported. Although releases, well, let's go over to the release column. B2, 25, zero, release. Okay, so this is zero release. If I move down... Yeah, it won't report it unless it changes. And so in this case, it's just going to be zero throughout everything. And there are no different releases in this sequence. So uh, I'm going to move back to the notes column. 20 B flat 2, pitch. And I'm going to actually go all the way up to the top. C3, pitch. Okay. And, and actually, let's move over to the start column. Bar 1, B1, start. Okay, bar one, beat one. And notice, by the way, that uh, Flow Tools now doesn't report zero ticks. Uh, so if it's, you know, bar one, beat one, and zero ticks, it'll just say bar one, beat one. And uh, same same holds true for, like, length. If something is, um, you know, 120 ticks long, it won't say zero bar, zero beats, and 120 ticks. It'll just say 120 ticks. It streamlines it a little bit, and it's just, just a bit nicer. Um, so I'm going to um, change the point where this note occurs, okay? So right now, Command F1. Bar one, beat one, start just to verify. Okay, so this is bar one, beat one. I'm going to switch it to like, uh, you know, I'll double tap command F1, and I'm going to change it to... Type start value. Uh, bar one, beat one, and 200. Bar one, bar one, bar one, beat one, tick 240. Two, 240 ticks. So now I'm going to go to the top. Okay. Bar one, beat one. I'm going to undo that. Can't undo. I'm going to now, instead of um, the start field, I'm going to move to the right, control right arrow. C3, pitch, 52, attack, zero, release, oh. 52. Let, well, let's change the pitch. C3, pitch. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, the way I just changed that first one, uh, you know, as I, I double tapped, you know, command F1, um, there is another way to change uh, these uh, parameters. If you're focused on them, like right now I'm focused on the pitch, I can uh, either double tap option P, remember that, uh, you know, command from before, or if I'm in this column, I can press control command return. Type pitch value. Okay, so I was on C3, so I'll type, uh, I don't know, B3. B pitch. B3, pitch. C flat 3. And, or C flat in this case, right? In this key. <laughs> Odd. Let me undo that. C3. Uh, let me uh, move over to... 52. Attack. Zero. Release. Uh, you know. 52. Attack. Yeah, the attack. If I do option A twice, I can type in the attack, or I can use the control command return key. I Either way, uh, I mean, in other words... To edit within the columns, doesn't matter which column you're in, Control, Command, Return will prompt you to enter a new value, okay? Uh, or if you remember the Option P, Option A, Option R, or the Command F123 uh, commands, you know, double tapping those, uh, all of those will work. Now, this is all in the MIDI event list. Now, if you were to say, uh, let's say this first note, it, or, well, let's move down a little bit. 28, 62, attack. Okay, so uh, this note, I'm going to delete it, okay? Okay, so I've deleted it. But now, if I use down arrow, up arrow, it's not selecting anything in this MIDI event list because... No, you know, nothing was selected. So you'd have to use voiceover to navigate within the track, and you're not going to be necessarily in the same position you were before because, you know, before we were on row one. And so here... One vertical line, one vertical line, zero, 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 text field, row one. You see we're on row one. Meanwhile, the the the, the place where I deleted the note was, was a little ways down the list. So you can... Uh, you know, press voiceover, spacebar, select this, or you can move the mouse to the center of the screen, uh, command option, shift M. It'll just move the, the mouse pointer right to the center of this window. Mouse move to center of current window. 
and I'm going to click. 43. Attack. Okay, so, um, you know, the note that I selected. Bar 73, B1. Start. <laughs> bar 73. I mean, it's just like it, it, it could become a catastrophe because you don't you don't really know where you are, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to move to the top, and I'm just going to show you an alternate way to edit MIDI information. I'm going to close this window. Mix calling MIDI demo. And now I'm in the mix window, okay? And uh, in order for this to work, I just have to say uh, you want to make sure of a couple of things that the that the track that you're working with is selected, the MIDI track or the instrument track. Number two, uh, that the clips are consolidated. So if you want, uh, go to the, the top of the session, option shift return, go to the end of the session, make sure the clips... Uh, make sure the track view is set to clips and use option shift three to consolidate everything. Then change your view to notes. Okay, so let me see what I'm in right now. Close button. Close button. Tracks. Track list pop. Piano dash instrument track. Inspector has to be on. Inspector on. I'm hitting W twice. Menu check mark. Notes. Okay, so notes are selected. I'm escaping. Piano dash instrument. Okay, I'm right at the top and I'm just going to press tab. 52. Attack. Okay, now notice. I still got that feedback from where I left off. I was in the attack column, okay? I'm going to use the uh, control left arrow. C3, pitch. To get to the pitch column, quote unquote. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm doing sort of air quotes because we're not in the MIDI event list table. However, the same information pertains to the mix window uh, with flow tools here because we're reporting what is essentially in the pitch column. So I'm going to continue hitting tab. A flat, A flat, one, E flat two, A flat two, E flat two, B flat two, G two, B flat, E flat two, G two, E flat two, E flat three, pitch. Okay. So I'm getting this information. If if I don't want any information, I could just continue with Control Left Arrow. Bar two, B one, no report. To the no report column. And so now if I just hit tab. Oh, there was that note that I deleted. I was looking for it. <laughs> okay, but let's say I want to delete that note right there. If I press delete, okay, I don't have a selection right now, you know, and again, that would be a problem. I would normally have to get into the MIDI event list or whatever and, and, and to select a note. But now what Flow Tools allows you to do is just simply hit tab and we're where we are at the point where we left off let's get rid of that note and continue we could delete that and you have this arpeggio you see, and, and again, uh, you can use the option P command to know what pitch is, uh, is selected right now. C4, pitch. The attack, option A. 66, attack. You know, so we have at our disposal uh, all of these shortcuts that we would normally have in the MIDI event list as well. I mean, the information that we would have from there. Um, instead of those shortcuts, we can... Use control left, right arrow to navigate to the column of information we want to hear. Bar 9, B1, C4, pitch, 66, attack. Let's say the attacks. I'm going to hit tab. 22, 21, 37, 25, 24, attack. So in other words, if you're going through a drum track or something like that and you want to kind of like even out the snares, you get to that, uh, you know, to that uh, note and you hear what the attack is, you either double tap option A or press Control Command Return. Type attack velocity value. Type the value and hit enter. And just to make it uh, per to, to be perfectly clear, I say uh, Control Command Return, and I'm talking about return uh, on the QWERTY keyboard, not the enter key. Now, if you're typing a value from the numeric keypad, uh, yes, you do hit. Uh, enter on the numpad, but in this case, this particular uh, command, this shortcut for editing that value is the return key. So, man, I'm so excited about these things. I probably forgot. Oh, yes, I did forget one thing. Here, you know what? This is it. As a fringe benefit of this sort of navigation, I just want to show you one more command, and uh, I'm going to uh, open up a different session uh, to show you this.
Okay, so let's go to... Next call in, sound check CD, window. All right, so I have like a, um, uh, a sound, it's called the sound check um, from Abbey Road. Uh, it's an old disc, which it ha it's from a CD and it has a bunch of files in it. Uh, and this would be good for, uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, so there's a bunch of clips in this timeline. And uh, so right now... Um, you know, there's some clips of like guitars and drums and stuff like that. They're all dropped in order from left to right. So right now I have no reporting on. So control left arrow. No report. You see, there's no report right now. So if I were to tab, you know, I don't get any feedback unless, you know, of course I jump up with the command F1 key to see where the start field is. But I'm just going to play this. Yeah, if I hit it tab again. Yeah, it's going through a few clips. So I'm going to go backwards again. Okay, just to that first one. Now I'm going to uh, press control right arrow. One minutes, five, six seconds, 213 milliseconds. Start. So it reports the start. So if I hit tab now. One nine minutes, two, six seconds, 146 milliseconds. Start. Just like we were getting reports in a MIDI track, these clips and where they start are being reported. Two zero minutes, one second, 133 milliseconds. Start. Okay, and now let's say instead of the start field, I choose to uh, report the length. Okay, so and you can you might be able to see where this is going. I'm going to press Control Right Arrow. No pitch. There is no pitch to report. No attack. No attack. No release. No release. Zero seconds length. And there's the length, okay? So now, if I were to use the standard sort of editing commands like Shift-Tab, um, which is what I'm going to do right now. 1 minute, 33 seconds, 346 milliseconds. Length. So it tells me what's selected, the length of what the selection is. But I'm going to continue selecting other files. Control-Shift-Tab. These are just built-in Pro Tools editing shortcuts. So I'm going to press that a couple of times. Two minutes, five, four minutes, eight seconds, five minutes, one, seven, six minutes, two, zero, seven minutes, two, three, eight minutes, two, two seconds, 200 milliseconds. Length. So I've selected a bunch of clips that amount to... Eight minutes, two, two seconds, 200 milliseconds. Eight minutes and 22 seconds, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, here's the extra little, uh, uh, nice little bonus command, uh, and that is to speak selected clips. Option, shift, P. Seven selected. Track 64, track 65, track 66, track 67, track 68, track 69, track 70. Of course, in this case, these clips are all named based on the CD, you know, track 1 through 99 or whatever it is. Um, now, if you have, uh, you know, edit selection follows uh, clip list selection or whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Um, in the preferences, you know, in the uh, editing tab, which I believe is tab 3. But you'll get there because you have that command one, two, three, uh, you know, shortcut thing now. So it'll be easy for you to find. Anyway, in the uh, clips uh, area there, uh, you want to make sure that the uh, the first two check boxes are checked so that the clip list table follows the edit selection in the timeline and vice versa. Uh, now, there's no way to sort of... Um, deselect these clips uh, the way sort of flow tools deselects tracks and stuff because these are following the selection in the timeline. So uh, in order to deselect clips or select different clips, um, you'd have to do stuff in the timeline like hit return. Zero seconds. Length. Okay, so now we have nothing uh, selected. We have a zero length. I'm going to press option uh, shift P. Seven selected. Track 64. Those clips are still selected, but now I'm just going to select the first clip. 35 seconds, 960 milliseconds. Length. Okay, so the first clip is selected. I'm hitting Option Shift P again. One selected. Track one. So you see the selection in the clips list table changes. So now we have just one clip selected, both in the timeline and in the clips list table. So, man, that's a lot of new stuff, and uh, we're very excited about this. And, of course, you know, the Flow Tools team is working on the next release already. Are you kidding? There's no rest. There's no rest for the Flow Tools team. Um, <laughs> but uh, next time you launch uh, Pro Tools, if you haven't done so already, you'll be alerted that Flow Tools 2.2 is out, and um, you can choose to install it, and we strongly urge you to do so because uh, because... It's the latest and greatest, and uh, we'll get uh, new stuff out to you uh, as soon as we can. And in the meantime, enjoy. And uh, as we always say, 
Go with the flow.